on this edition of the coffers from zero to minus one. Well, if you're watching this, that means the time is upon us here in America. It's Godzilla week. Godzilla minus one, Takashi Yamazaki's highly anticipated brand new entry into the Godzilla series is getting a North American release in theaters this week. Oh, it's an exciting time for all of us G fans. And this movie is something special. But like every other Godzilla movie, we have merchandise to look at and today's episode is of course the standard bearer of all Godzilla merchandise the Bandai figures and of course the standard bearer in the name of toys for all things Godzilla is Bandai and the Bandai movie monster series six inch Godzilla minus one figure during my trip to Japan earlier this month, I managed to snag one of these bad boys from all places. Toys R Us. Yes, not the Godzilla store. A Toys R Us, which are still hopping in Japan as we speak. Yeah, it's a shame we couldn't keep them going over here. But economics aside, let's take a look at this bad boy. He stands a whopping six inches, as is standard with all of the movie monster series. But he's also an impressive... About 9, 10 inches long from tail to snout, as you're seeing here. And I'll give them this. Bandai has been up in their game on this line. The paint job is actually pretty good, featuring just the little details, as you see here, with Godzilla's battle scars that he receives in the movie, as highlighted by the paint. And again, I don't think I'm giving away anything if you've seen the trailers, but Godzilla does receive some damage in the movie. And the paint does highlight that, which I found to be actually a very nice touch, considering that uh, this isn't how he looks completely through the movie. So kudos to Bandai on that. Now let's talk articulation, much like every Bandai figure. He only, he's very limited in his movement. He has five points, arms, as you can see there. And the legs, which give you just movement at the hips and shoulder joints. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, you got to remember, these are kids' toys. These aren't, uh, these aren't your superposable action figures. The tail is completely molded in, along with uh, the head and mouth. And, of course, there's the standard tag, which is attached, featuring artwork from the movie there you get the little information along with the stamp and there's the back of the tag the paint job's pretty good it's pretty standard the spines are the same color as the rest of the body as it is in the movie but that is screen accurate i will give credit where credit's due the molding on this and the detailing is pretty exquisite for a bandai figure now i paid about 25 dollars for him in japan when uh, i picked him up at toys r us uh, import you're probably gonna pay close to 30 which for this line I still think is a little pricey but overall for the first official piece of toy merchandise the, he's he's not bad he's a pretty good figure and he will look excellent amongst the rest of your collection although if you like uh, your figures bigger there is going to be the King series uh, one that will be released so you might want to pay a little more for that one if you don't like the six inch line and there you have it, guys. That's going to do it for this review. Remember, we do have a show. It's called the Kaiju Kingdom Podcast. You can listen to us on any of your finer podcast streamers. And remember to like and subscribe. Or don't. It's a free country. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Thanks for watching.
We'll see you in the next video.